everyone welcome to another episode of let's be nerds i'm your host lizette and i'm here today with my co-hosts Stephen j and gordon what's up guys how are you doing doing pretty good can't complain pretty good day so far yeah so we've got a pretty fun topic today we're going to be talking about board games and card games that we love so Stephen, why don't you kick us off absolutely i love this topic because a lot of people, when you think nerd-related things, you know, you're stuck in the video game, movie, TV show type of mindset. But truly, some of the games that we're going to be talking about have such large followings and large histories that you can be a nerd for these types of games. And it can be, like, you know, you look at games like Dungeons & Dragons. Now, that's a game that's associated with, like, a following somewhat nerdy, somewhat of like a geeky type of thing. And people think that immediately upon hearing the name, but like the type of games we're talking about today, maybe don't have that association, but I can tell you when I was younger, board games were a part of everyday life. What I like really like about it is a lot of these games bring people together, specifically families. I don't know about you guys, Growing up, we were always Saturday nights playing something. A big one for us was Clue. Um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with that game. Yep. I do like the game of Clue. It's just one of those things that's such a classic. Uh, It's made by Hasbro, and it's essentially the mystery game where you try to track down who is the killer based on the randomly selected cards. And what's... What I love about it is it's, it creates conversation, it creates fun memories, it creates such a family moment that I can remember countless Saturday nights. Um, when we grew up, we didn't have all the money in the world. You know, my parents, they, they did the best they could and they provided a great life. But, you know, it wasn't going to the movies every single weekend or going out to dinner or what have you. It was... We're sitting down, we're all going to talk about our week, we're going to spend some time together. A lot of the times, my aunt and uncle and their kids would come over, and um, it would essentially be everybody bring a different board game, everyone, you know, bring something to the table, and we're going to all, you know, have food and have snacks and just hang out, and we, it was just such a big part of our childhood, and I think that's why i became such a nerd when it came to clue yeah like i've i've followed that franchise for so long like they actually they have video games they have mobile games they had a movie i they, love that movie so much that movie's so good you know it did over like a million dollars at the box office oh wow like most people don't know that i think people think it's like a, i mean it is kind of a cult classic now but even at the time of release it was popular yeah can i just re- oh do you were you going to talk about the movie, or I don't want to cut I, you off? No, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I just wanted to say they did something really cool when they had the movie in theaters. So they played it up in the in the fashion of the board game, how you have different solutions to that board game every time you play. There are three separate endings to that movie, and when they first showed it in theaters they had a random one selected that they sent to all the theaters so people were arguing over who did it in real life in real life because they didn't announce that they had different endings it it took i believe a maybe a week maybe a little bit longer i don't know the exact time frame before people finally figured out what they did now that's really cool yeah See, like, the way I've always seen the movie, because it was always like you saw all the endings together. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I never knew that they did that upon release. That's really cool. Yeah. So the the way that you've seen is probably the, the same way I saw it the first time, where 
it shows you one ending and then it cuts to like a um, text on the screen saying that's one way it could have happened. Now here's another and then it shows you the next one and then it goes to the third one where it's like this is what actually happened. Mm -hmm. But when it was playing in the movie theaters, they just they had different reels, I guess, that they sent out to each theater that only had a single ending. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. That's how you mess with the general public. I I was going to say, and that's like long before, like, you know, the internet and things like that, that something like that would have been able to be been spoiled or talked yeah. about. Like, so I, I want to say that for some reason, I want to say that that came out in 86. I'm going to 1985. 85. Oh, I was yeah. close. You were very close. And I, I was off on my number. It's uh, it ultimately. Oh, wait a minute. I, I miss. I have to go back to my notes here. I misspoke. It didn't do well at the box office. That's Okay, I was wondering because usually cult classics become like they go on to be popular later, and this has become a cult classic. So overall, though, in its like ultimate grossing, overall made fourteen million. Okay. And that's just in the United States. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it was like through the VHSs, the DVDs, and all the different stuff like that. Was, yeah. It really became a thing. But anyway, I digress. I just think. That game to me, like, we would buy different versions. They would be special editions. We'd buy those. Like, we had, we actually, everybody would have their preferred version. And we mm-hmm. all kind of were on the same page. Like, this one particular version everyone loved. All of the, and it's it's one of those things where it wasn't even the original format. It was just the version that we came across that we loved. That it was like, oh, are we playing good Clue? Or are we playing, like, the other Clue? <laughs> and, like... <laughs> It just became a point where we just took the other ones out of the rotation. Yeah. You know, we play like different stuff like Yahtzee and um, all kinds of stuff that maybe you don't have as much of like a f- background. Um, Monopoly was always good for more of a family fight scenario. That was always common. Yeah. Yep. If you want to cause problems. Yes. Um, n- probably had a few breakdowns of myself over that game. <laughs> um, but. To me, I think when you talk about board games and card games at large, it's more so what makes me nerdy about them is the togetherness that it brings and the memories and the laughter and the joy. And I will always love board games. I will always love card games. And I think we should make it some form of a law that families must play board games together to bring back some wholesome stuff in today's world. That was very well said. That's it. That's it. That's my rant. Um, that's all I really got for you is go buy a clue and go play it with your family and your kids. <laughs> yeah, I, I will say clue and a lot of the, I guess, classic board games. It's fun seeing all the different versions that have come out because I actually have um, a Firefly version of clue. I, I know I mentioned Firefly a couple episodes ago. Mm-hmm. Um so I, they did a version of Clue based around that TV show. So I have that one. I've seen a Harry Potter one. I think I've seen a Supernatural one. I've seen like a bunch of different TV shows and movies. They've done versions of it. So it's kind of like you get to be nerdy about your your other fandoms mm-hmm. and play this really good board game. Or you can pick up the classic version, which is also always a lot of fun. Exactly. The licensing that they've done where there's so many different versions of so many different games is absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. There is one other game that I just thought of that I was obsessed with. And it came out shortly after Clone Wars. Now this game, I'm blanking on the... Like, it just hit me. It's not in my notes or anything, and I'm not prepared for this one. (laughs) Um, But it was a Star Wars game. It came out after Clone Wars. And it encompassed every character from the original trilogy and up to Clone Wars and like the strategic game where you when you picked a character you picked like you were a set like you were Luke and Leia you were Han and Chewbacca or you were uh I don't think CPO and R2D a playable character I think they were like NPCs in a board game level but I need to find it if anybody listening knows it was essentially like one player had to be on the good side. The, the, on, 
least be on the dark side. And it was like a strategic game of movement around the board and combat. And it was like a really innovative combat system um, using like chips and different attacks and like build. And I, no one ever wanted to play it with me. <laughs> but God bless <laughs> my mom. Like a fun game. God bless my mom. She stuck through it and <laughs> played it with me multiple times. And she like really her to enjoy it. Um, but I ended up like using some of the figurines toys. Like, so this is like how old, like this game is. I ended up using the little figurines as like toys too. So <laughs> I think I lost a few. So I don't know if we could really like play it, bust it out and play it to this, like right now. But if anybody in the comments, there anybody knows the game, the name of the game, I think it's still here in this house somewhere. But I don't know where. I'm going to go on a hunt. But if you're listening and you know the name of the game, please comment it and tell me. This game for forever. And I never, I have not come across it. And my mom swears she never threw it out. Maybe when I come up, we'll just tear the house apart and see if we can, what we can come across. I'm sure Kim would love that. <laughs> well, if we put, if we clean while we go, we can mm-hmm. say we're cleaning her house. Exactly. So we're doing her a favor, favor too. Favor with a little you, bit of personal. Was it more for card game, Steve, or did it have it? Did it have pieces? It had uh, everything. With every character was a painted figurine, and like surprisingly, like good detail. And there was cards involved, and I believe that's when. You... No, Yoda was a playable character. Um, I think the cards of it came in the form of R two D two and C three P. I believe were like cards that instructed you on like what was going on and there was like chip and i believe there was dice involved for like your movement and your powers because like you had a character card and each character had like i think two abilities that did so much damage but needed so much charge and you had to like move around the map map power to use like the big attacks and then you had to ultimately take out the opposition was it star wars legion do you have a photo of it? Um, only a picture of the characters. Send it in the chat. Uh, give me a second, and I will do that. Um. Uh, here we go. It definitely sounds like it would be fun. Mm-hmm. It def it does sound really fun. I believe that this is a picture of some of the characters in the game. I could be wrong. It's in the Discord right now. Mm, no, that's that's a little bit too high detail for these characters. Okay. Yeah, that looks like that might be used in like a D and D style Star Wars. The level of detail on those. Star Wars Epic Duels, maybe. Oh, that sounds right. <laughs> Let me let me send you this picture. Give me a second. <laughs> I love this podcast. Ask a question, you get an answer. Fifteen seconds later, <laughs> hopefully. You just gotta and give us enough it, ch- enough time to Google it. That's it. Don't don't give away my tactics. That is it. Oh, I forgot that there were stormtroopers and stuff. Yeah, that Star Wars duels came out in two thousand and two. Mm-hmm. And like. Every, like there was multiple boards, like there, like the boards were um, based on different movie settings, and like oh, so good. You know who used to play it with uh, with me a lot was Uncle Bob. Oh, he okay. loved the game. He appreciated the game, and he'd come in and we'd always play. He actually okay. might have bought it for me as a birthday gift. Now that I think about it. So I've got an idea for you. If you are missing some pieces, uh-huh. um, there is should be able to find it on Amazon or something depending on what characters you're missing Mm -hmm. there is a Star Wars chess set that it looks just from this picture it looks like the figurines may be about the same size as what's in this chess set I'll have to I'll have to look at it because I actually bought it for Drew for his graduation present from high school and Mm -hmm. now the figures in the chess set are just kind of like a cheesy plastic uh, like silver and then gold colored I hand painted all of them mm-hmm. to make them actually look accurate so once they're hand painted they look about like how these figurines are that you've got here on the screen Gordon so if you're missing figures we may be able to just replace them and then keep playing that would be, that would be awesome 
Okay, I'm down with that. And then the last board game that I have to rant about, it was, <laughs> sorry, I just like, I have to mention the show, every podcast until it finally gets a reboot, uh, Disney's Gargoyles, when they, when they released, uh, what, shut up, Gordon. Have I started watch. I started watching it the other day. Do you like it? I do. I'm Thank not you. very. I'm not very far. I think I'm still on episode two because I got distracted. But I was like, "This is interesting. This will hold my attention." I'm telling you, and it's like, I've seen the first four episodes because they released it as a movie, as you know, from me talking about it ad nauseum. But I've seen the first four so many times that I could like probably tell you the whole thing, like recite lines. I won't. I'll, I'll spare you. But <laughs> when they released it, because it wasn't a theatrical release, they released it on TV as a big thing, and then they did like. VHS release, they actually sent you a board game with, like, if you bought the special edition, and you got mm-hmm. to play along during, like, one of the versions of the movie, and it was so cool. It was, I believe it's called, I'm trying to think, I think it's called Gargoyle's Awakening Game, and it's like, yeah. you move along as the movie progresses. <sighs> so good. So it's good. $30 at Target if you want to buy it. I do. I do. I don't have a target around here. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll bring you one. No, you do not. Do not bring me. A, you don't have to do that. <laughs> and I don't even okay. have the VHS. Like, I'd have to watch it on Disney Plus, and it's not the same experience. I'll, I'll figure it out. All right, well, fine. We can make a target run when you come down and visit me. How about that? That would be perfect. Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so this is, I guess, my whole point. Like, for me... I'm a nerd about board games like this because of the memories, the nostalgia, and like the love. Because again, it goes back to my mom. She was so upset. She got my obsession with Gargoyles. She understood it. She committed herself to like being a part of that with me. And like every time, without fail, it'd be Gargoyles time. And we'd, we'd sit there and we'd watch the movie. That, mind you, it was four TV length episodes, so almost two hours. Okay. We'd play the board game, and then we'd watch episodes from the series, and it was a cool experience because she wasn't, like, faking it just because, like, oh, well, this is what my kid's into. She was actually, like, invested in, like, actually winning a game and beating me and, like, whatever. And I think when people think about nerddoms and fandoms, they don't really recognize the power that these board games can carry. And that's why I thought this was a really cool episode. So. Yeah. I mean, I definitely, I definitely agree with you on that. I remember we didn't necessarily have a set day in our house to play board games and card games. My mom tried to set it up many, many times and it never really panned out the way she wanted it to. But we would have like family and friends over from time to time. And like, you know, my parents would, it's kind of the same situation as your parents, Stephen, like, they would make dinner, we'd have snacks, and then we'd break out a couple board games, and we all had a really good time. Like, I, I have some very fond memories of some of my cousins who live, like, over in Maryland, making the trip over, and they brought a friend with them who, at the time, I thought was really cute, and I'm we... I'm telling Drew. It's all right, he already knows. <laughs> um, so, we, we were, ironically, we were playing Clue, and... Um, I remember like teasing this guy and being like, Oh, you should tell me what cards you have. And he did. So I won the game and everybody was screaming at him. They're like, Zach, you're not supposed to tell her. And he's like, what? I don't know how to play. I was like, yeah, you do. You're just, you think I'm cute too. So shut up. (laughs) But then I like, I also have just to turn this back around and bring Drew back into the story. um, I have memories of his parents coming over and hanging out and playing board games with us too. But he is, younger than me so the memories that i have of his parents coming over to hang out like he and his brother were a little bit too young to play some of the games we were playing (laughs) so i was playing with the adults and they sent him and jared off to the other room to play with my sister (laughs) you need to do that tiktok challenge of like will we have well what is the age difference again uh, four and a half years. Oh, it's not as dramatic as I thought. I was going to say, you that know, TikTok challenge? Like, when I was a senior in high school, would we have dated and they showed a photo of them being, like, really young? <laughs> so, this is completely off topic, but I've got to share it now that you've said that. So, um, this is not in my family. It's in Drew's family. One of his uncles, um, 
got married to his wife, who's an absolute sweetheart. But um, when she was a senior in high school, he was in kindergarten. Oh. <laughs> okay. They No, they did get together a little bit. Um, I don't want to say later in life because I wouldn't consider either of them like older, but like when the age gap was not as big of a deal. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Age is is just a number unless you're under 18. Exactly. (laughs) But anyway, so some of the games that I wanted to talk about today are a little bit more um, card game based because... And at least one of these, Stephen, I think we tried to teach you how to play when you, the last time you came down and visited me, but my grandmother was trying to teach you and we all know she's not the best at teaching games because she conveniently forgets rules Mm -hmm. until they help her out. Yep, and then you get a side punch of like, oh, I win, and like, like, oh, okay. It was just like, oh, it's like, um... You never told me about that rule. Well, I forgot about it until it helped me. So Mm -hmm. she swears she doesn't do that, but we know. We know. Yeah, we we know. And my mom even has said that to me. She's like, you know, Aunt Leah does. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I know. (laughs) (laughs) So um, the two card games that I originally wanted to talk about are Canasta, which has a reputation. Yes. Um, It has a reputation as being an old person card game for whatever reason i don't really know why like all my cousins now again my grandmother taught it to all of me and my cousins um we all know the rules well enough by now that we don't let her forget any of them (laughs) so she does complain about that she's like you're supposed to let me win it's like no you never let us win when we were younger why would we let you win now um basically i i don't even know how to explain canasta without having the cards in front of me it can be a two three or four person game if you're playing with four players then you play teams Mm -hmm. um but basically you're trying to collect seven cards of the same number so like seven threes and that would be a canasta there are wild cards there's other mechanics of this but you have to have so many cards laid down on your board with matches and add up so many points and in order to finish around not necessarily win around but finish around you have to lay down all the cards in your hands you can't have anything left in your hand mm-hmm. um and then there's a whole point system that goes along with that and whatnot it, it is a bit complicated but if you have someone to sit down and explain the rules to you. It it can be a lot of fun. The other one that my cousins and I really like to play with our grandmother because it, we make her scream and throw fits because we beat her very, very badly at this is multi-handed solitaire. Now this is the one that I know we tried to teach you, Steven. Yes. Um, So do you guys know how to play solitaire, not on the computer, but with an actual deck of cards, just by yourself, just a single Mm -hmm. Game of yeah. Okay. I love to play it. Yes. So multi handed <laughs> solitaire, basically what you're doing is each person has their own deck of cards and you're playing off of your own solitaire board. But when you put an ace up, everybody can play off the same aces. So you may not have uncovered your ace of hearts yet to start um, you know, putting cards up. But if somebody else did, you can put a two of ace on their, or I'm sorry, a two of hearts on their ace of hearts and go like that. So the way that this, and if I'm not explaining this well, guys, please stop me and ask questions. Um, the way that this turns really crazy is the more people we have playing, we're all trying to beat each other to get cards up off of our boards. So we may all have like, a four of clubs come available at the same time and we're all fighting and like shoving each other out of the way to try and be the first one to put it up on, um, on the top of the board. My grandmother can't move fast enough. So we usually beat her. Mm -hmm. 
And then she starts screaming and saying that we're supposed to give her, I, I think she's bumped it up to a 10 second delay now. It used to be two seconds. It, it's gotten larger over the years and we're all just like, no. She's like, I'm old. It's a handicap. We're like, no. No. It's, it doesn't work like that. So um, it, it just turns into utter chaos and it is a lot of fun. But on to well, something. Bit before oh. you go on, oh, yeah, I yeah, just yeah. want to say whenever you come up, um, I kind of have this like vision in my head of like if it's I don't know which night it would be, but like maybe like going down to Crow's Nest and like if Lou is in a good mood, you know how that goes. Oh, God, I can't say that. Oh, shit. I have Take to it back it now. We, <laughs> what's the, what we have to 25 minute mark, 26 minute mark. We caught to edit that out. Yep, um, yeah, I'll put it down. Okay. I'm putting it in the timestamp. Because Kevin definitely does listen to this. Um, anyway, so I was thinking that one night it would be great for us to go down to Crow's Nest and after hours. It's like that Saturday that I get off early would probably be the best because like I do do have to, have to like do some shifts. Why is that? Yeah, I mean that oh, that's fine. I get it. Um, but uh, so like, um, what I was thinking is like then like get down there and like you and like I can come home from work, get you guys go down. Um, after I get like cleaned up and what have you, go back down. This is like Drew and I can have our long overdue well i'm sure by that point by saturday we have already done that but have our blue moons and do our thing yeah and when, when gordon and demetrius get off if we are able to maybe get a room like a table in the back room and like play some of these games down there yeah that actually kind of goes with what gordon and i were talking about um before we started this episode that it would be a lot of fun to get together and play games because the um the game that i'm about to talk about I'm actually, I'm going to bring that up with me. Um, I'll bring Cards Against Humanity and a, a couple others just so that we have some options. And can you teach us the solitaire game? Yeah, so absolutely. I guess we we'll love to learn how to play that game. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what jogged in my head, like this whole like diatribe. Is I definitely yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, we just need, everybody needs a plain deck of cards, preferably with different designs on the back so it's easy to sort them at the end, which I, I have. I got that candle. <laughs> Okay, I was going to say I have more than enough, but if you've got that, then I, I won't bur- worry about bringing any up. I, I my, the more. cards I have are very diverse. All right, cool. Um, and before anyway. you start, I want to hop in here and say, because I looked it up, because I wanted to see how much it would cost to get that game Steve was raving about, Star Wars um, Epic Duels. Yeah. Um, for a mint condition unopened box, you're going for upwards of $300 plus. I'm not oh, at all surprised. That game? <laughs> and even for the ones that are opened and are still in good condition, anywhere from 100 and up. Oh, no. I know Luke Skywalker figurine definitely has his broken lightsaber. I definitely did not, don't have resell to you. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't... But again, this is why we don't want to sell it. We want to be able to play it. And this also just kind of justifies buying that chess set and replacing the pieces because I... I was going to suggest trying to get a new copy of it, but before Gordon even checked the price, I'm like, there's no way we're going to afford that. No. I mean, I love Not memories yet. and nostalgia, and you heard my rant, but like, do I love them $300 much? No. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Alrighty, so this, let me go into the next game that I'm definitely bringing up to play with you guys. So this is a newer card game. I've played this with my relatives several times and it always leaves us like laughing so hard our faces hurt and we're crying um so the name of this game is may cause side effects so hear me out on this one because it's now every everybody always gives me a weird look when i explain um it has there's several different piles of cards so one pile is red pills the other pile is blue pills so, is this political? <laughs> no, it's the matrix. <laughs> um, so when it is your turn, you and then there's a third set of cards that have um, different words and phrases on them. So when it is your turn, you take a red pill and a blue pill, and you read off what they both say. So usually one of them 
tells you like you have to talk in an accent or with a lisp or something like you something a specific way you have to talk and then the other one is something that you have to do while you're talking so like you may have to spin around the room and pirouette like you're a ballerina while you're talking so you are supposed to partner up with someone else who's playing and you're reading the cards that have the words or phrases on them and you're trying to get that other person to guess the word that you have in your card without saying it so it's i, I think taboo is a game that's kind of like that with like you have to get somebody to guess the word or phrase without actually saying the word or phrase am i have you guys played that one yeah yeah. Okay, so it's kind of like that, but it mixes in you have to be talking and performing whatever actions that the red and blue pills tell you. Now, all the other players are supposed to be calling you out when you're not doing what your pills tell you you should be doing. And so everybody knows what the pills are. They just yes. don't know the word. That's Correct. Right. Correct. So I have so many videos of playing this game with my cousins the um <laughs> the first time we played it we we were all out with my grandmother and we were still kind of learning it and um oh, what was everything like there one pill tells you like you have to beg like a dog like there's you have to speak in an outrageous french accent you have to go around stroking all of the other players faces while you're talking or like it's there's there's so so many things and it's like it makes every like some of them will make everyone really uncomfortable but it's but it's funny at the same time so it's awesome with a big group but you can play you can play it with a smaller group as well but it is definitely more entertaining the more people you have mm -hmm. um so that one is what i'm definitely definitely bringing up with me to play with you guys another one i'm not sure if i'm going to bring this one up and this will lead into what you want to talk about gordon um because our games are made by the same company this other game is called poetry for neanderthals and it comes with a giant inflatable bat that you get to hit people with I love so that. yes so again it's kind of the same thing as you're teamed up you have um I can't remember if the teams are colored red and gray or something, but like every other person, you sit in a circle around the table and every other person is part of a team. So like you count off and like odds are on a team, evens are on a team. Mm -hmm. And um, whoever's turn it is the same thing. You have a word, like a, a word or a phrase that you're trying to get your teammates to guess. And the catch with this one is again, you can't say the words, but you also are not allowed to use any words that are more than one syllable. And that's what the bat is for. So the other team is supposed to be paying attention to what words you're using. And if you use a word that's two syllables or more, they get to hit you with the bat. Uh, and okay. um, it was very, very entertaining. Even more so because most of my cousins couldn't tell how many syllables were in the word so i was the one who had to police that for everyone <laughs> which was which was great when it was my turn because i was too focused this is so like i used words i shouldn't have and i was too focused on trying to get my point across and they're all like la di dying around me like oh it's liza she knows what she's doing <laughs> And then, like, 20 seconds go by, and Drew's sitting across the table, like, waiting for somebody to catch on to the fact that I said water, which is two syllables. And he's finally like, guys, like, Delaney was standing behind me with the bat. He's like, Delaney, she said water. And everybody, like, it took them, like, a second. They're all like, what? Oh. And it's, like, it such a delayed reaction that I get smacked in the head with a bat. And I'm just like, it took you that long to realize? And they're all like, we don't know. So definitely takes a little bit more thought about it, but it is also a lot of fun I, that so, sounds fun yeah i'd like to hit gordon with the bat i can say it sounds like that power will be abused relatively quickly well so I, many syllables you just use <laughs> i feel like when we go to play this game that you have gordon there's going to be some violence with it as well uh, 
I don't know what you're talking about. You can. It doesn't matter how soft those things are. You can throw them hard enough that they'll hurt. They're memory foam burritos. There's, they, they will be fine. I promise you that Delaney. I promise you that Delaney could throw them hard enough to make you cry. I believe that. Well, she's not going to be there, at least not to the best of my knowledge. So I, everyone should be okay. No, she's going to be out in Ohio or Indiana, I believe. So a little bit too far to get to us. Indiana is only an hour away. <laughs> she can have her show up with whatever she's doing. So. I mean, she's she's so going to be. Things to censor. We could we could go. She's showing goats. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I love goats. <laughs> All right, I... tell, tell us about your game, Gordon. Um. <laughs> Yes, sorry. Uh, sorry. Actually, <laughs> actually, before you do that, now would be oh. a good time for an ad read. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Gordon, you've got a game that I have really been wanting to play. Yeah, I, I, I do. You've told me this, and I am excited to share it because... Um, it involves violence and <laughs> cards and a giant uh, coin that says "Fear Me" with a muscular burrito on it. <laughs> um, th- th- this game is no, no, none other than uh, "Throw Throw Burrito" by Exploding Kittens. Uh, not, not sponsored, uh, but you know, hit, hit us up, Exploding Kittens. We'll, we'll <laughs> gladly, gladly. We so, love all your games, so yes, please. yes, please. <laughs> Not we us want to... begging for ad money. <laughs> no, we it's we are reaching out our hand to help a business spread their uh, influence in video games. Uh, either way, okay. So let's, back to throw throw burrito. Um, the, it's a tabletop card game slash like throwing burritos at people as hard as you can. Um, th- these burritos are incredibly incredibly soft like memory foam like i i find it hard to believe that this can get thrown at anyone and hurt we will find a way mm-hmm. i know we will but still i i find it yeah, i feel it's going to be a difficult task it, this is for, for as simple as the game sounds it's a kind it's a complicated ish game when it when you break it down to all the the rules and everything, because your goal is to pass cards around the table and get sets of three of a kind as fast as you can. Okay. And everyone goes at once. There are no turns. It's all all players are going at the same time. You draw from a personal pile and discard face down onto onto the other personal pile. Of the player to your left, so you pretty much any card you don't want, you place down in the uh, discard pile or the personal pile to the person to your left. Isn't that so, is that kind of how spoons works? I mm-hmm. don't know. I don't. I've never played spoons, so okay. Um, I, I honestly couldn't tell you. Fair enough. It sounds similar, yes. But go on. But if and say you run out of cards in your personal draw pile. You can, you may pull, draw, pull from the community piles, but you must resume drawing from your personal pile once it has cards again. Okay. So the the, the setup's a little weird. I guess I probably could have went over that first, but you, you get 15 cards face down for each player. You don't have to count. It's just approximate. It doesn't really matter how many cards. But that, that's your personal pile. Then all the other cards get put into two piles in the middle next to the burritos. They're the community cards that you pull from. If, you're commu- if your personal pile gets, gets ran out, you know, you can't really pull any from a pile that doesn't exist as much as uh, you'd like to play God and try. It doesn't work that way. Okay. Um, Interesting each, take. Each, each, each player uh, takes five cards from the top of their piles. Look at them and leave the rest face down till you get to your, till you start the game. Um, you're trying to get three cards again, and you uh, as quickly as you can by discarding cards in your hand one at a time, drawing new ones from your pile. When you get a matching set of three cards, 
you put them face up in front of you. That's your score pile. And draw three more cards from <laughs> your personal pile. You can never have more than five cards in your hand. Which kind of sucks. If you had more, you might be able to you know, move along a little faster. And p- points are points are a little weird. You get a, a set of cards is worth one point. You get a set of burrito cards, brawl cards, war cards, or duel cards. They're worth two points. Um, it also starts a battle. And I'm sure that's probably the most exciting part about this game is when you actually get to throw burritos at people. I mean, I mean, that's the only reason why I, I play this game is to uh, release years of pent-up anger towards people. And by throwing foam burritos at their face, <laughs> which is not recommended because it might hurt somehow with a foam burrito. But still, so you, you can get, if you get three brawl cards, the player to your right, and your left are immediately in a brawl. So, say I was in the middle and got those three cards down, and I said, you and Steve are on my right and left. You two, immediately when I play those cards, have to grab the burritos as quickly as possible and throw them at each other. And the first one to get hit, loses. <laughs> I love that, this already. That, 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 that ends the brawl. No points rewarded. I, the only one who gets the points are me for playing the cards. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I mean, I haven't really read through these instructions in a while. I, that could be wrong, but still. It's, it's just for the entertainment value. Yeah. Exactly. Now, let me the, ask the, you this, Gordon. Did your therapist, like, put you onto this, like, for the God, no. Thing? I <laughs> found this um, myself by watching vat19.com. Okay. Which... That can be an episode. That website's amazing. I recommend anyone to find it. You find a bunch of cool little gadgets and uh, gizmos for really cheap. But let's get back to the, this game of lovely mayhem. Um, the, the next set of battles you can do is, uh, is a war. And when you play the three war cards, all players at the table, except for the person who played the war cards, are immediately in a war. And they should try to grab the burrito quickly as possible and throw it at any players except for the person to um, play the war cards and then whoever gets hit first loses the war and now there's only two burritos so if you're playing with six people you better get the you better get down if you don't grab the burrito first so not only do you have to pay attention to your cards in your hand you have to pay attention to the cards that people are playing down because if they play any of these and you're late to the draw you you lose, and that, you know, that will inevitably be your own fault. It definitely feels like oh. they're playing off of, at least what I remember of how I was taught to play Spoons, is maybe that was their, like, base game, and then they just improved, it better. improved yeah. upon it. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Instead of gab- <laughs> grab the, gab- grabbing the spoon to, for survival, it'd be like throwing the spoon at somebody. I'm not even done. I, there's oh. another <laughs> battle. There's another battle you can play. It's called a duel. When you play three duel cards, pick any two players, including yourself if you want. Like, you can be a part of this duel all you want. And what you pretty much do, you stand back to back, just just like a gunfight in the middle of a street. You, you uh, walk three paces, you say three, two, one, and simultaneously, that's not how you say that word, you yell the word burrito and turn around and whip the burrito at the other person. And whoever gets hit loses. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to play this. I, I'm all in. I'm all in. This is going to no, be so make, much fun. They, they, they do have rules if you make a mistake. If you don't have any, a, a correct set of three, you lose the battle. Mistakenly grab the burrito, you lose the battle. In both cases, you lose. Uh-huh. No, ending a battle. If you lose a battle, you take a, bur- a burrito bruise. And you don't want your burrito <laughs> to be bruised, okay? <laughs> You put, it in, you put it in your score pile, and those bruises are minus one point. Only one burrito bruise is given out per battle. So you want to win. You don't get points if you win, but you don't get penalized if you lose or if you win. You, you just stay neutral. The loser gets penalized. Then after the battle, all burritos are returned to the table. You grab your cards, 
and the player who triggered the battle counts 3 to 1 burrito, and the game resumes. Um, when you to start the game, just pick a player and say 3 to 1 burrito, and you start going ham. Now, there, there's um, situations for winning here. Um, let's see. The game is played in two rounds. The first round is over when the last burrito bruise is given out. Mm-hmm. Player with the most points win that round. The winner of the round gets the Fear Me badge, which I will take a picture and put it in the chat for you guys to see just how beautiful this little badge is. I can see it in the picture that you sent of the whole game, but it is... I, I would like a, um, a better picture of this. Here's the clear, a, a very reflective but clear picture. So whoever gets that Fear Me badge proudly displays it in front of them the next round. And reset the table and play a second round. At the end of the second round, if the person with the Fear Me badge wins again, they win the game. Someone else wins the round, that person must duel the first person to win the badge to determine the winner. Oh. Um, there, there are ties. If two people tie at the end of the round, resolve it with a duel. If three or more, you reshuffle the deck. You have one player drawn to a war card appears, and then you play the war version of uh, battles until someone wins now there's a whole backside to this uh, um, that explains more rules to make it even better because there's battle rules there's multiple battles at once there's ties in battles hitting missing catching and more battles like this game only gets better and I and I I'm not even. I hope you're ready. Okay, I'm so, ready. If, during the battle, first person get hit loses. That, that's been determined already. If multiple battles can happen at once, if two more happen at any kind or declared approximately the same time, all players, all players immediately start a war. Like that means if there's six of us playing, and two people put down two of any kind of a. Uh, battle uh, starters. It's an all-out war. The last people still standing after are the winners, and they don't get a, ba- a Bruce Burrito token. <laughs> <laughs> Only one Burrito Bruce is given out at the end of the war, so it's pretty much <clears throat> any player can grab the Burrito and hit another player. The first player hit loses. So it's pretty much if there's seven, six of us playing, Everyone can target one person if they want it. That, that's not against the rules. Hmm. It'd be rude, but it's not against the rules. Steve, I know what you're thinking, and I would hit you first. Um, <laughs> you're stuck with arms. You're not going to get to that burrito. <laughs> if any battle results in a tie because two players are hit at the same time, you just do a duel to see who wins. And you keep repeating if there keeps being continuous ties. So, so when the hitting... At any time you throw a burrito and hit another player, it counts as a hit, obviously. If a burrito hits you first, then bounces onto the floor or an object, it counts as a hit. If you successfully hit, the battle is immediately over. Simple rules. It can't bounce off something and hit you. That doesn't count. This isn't dodgeball. This is throw throw a burrito. Two different games here we're talking about, man. It has to hit you first. If it doesn't hit you, it's out of bounds. It's not a playable ball. And the war keeps going. If missing is, you know, kind of, I would assume it would be obvious, but there's all, there's rules because some people are kind of dumb, and you have to explain what you do when you miss someone with a burrito. Any time you throw a burrito, doesn't hit, counts as a miss. Who would have guessed? If you hit a player who's not in the battle, counts as a miss. If the burrito hits another object. Counts as a miss before it hits you. That's a miss. After any miss, any battling player can pick it up and immediately throw it again. There's no cooldown. This is all-out burrito war, and you are in it to survive. And that's that. You want to survive. You you want to be the one to make your friends cry by hitting them with a burrito. (laughs) And there's the catching category. If you catch the burrito after it's been thrown at you, the player who threw it loses the battle. You can catch a burrito while holding another burrito. 
but any successful catch ends the battle. If you catch, if you try to catch a burrito and you fumble the catch, like Tom Brady, <laughs> as it doesn't hit any other object, if it doesn't hit any other object during the fumble, it counts as a catch. Kind of weird. Don't really like that rule. I think you should be out, but you know, I didn't make the game. Now, you, you can dodge, you can use other players as shields or objects. You can use a burrito to shield or deflect another burrito. And you can always run and hide or delay before firing in a duel. Whatever, whatever you gotta do to take the other person by surprise. It, 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 again, it's all out war. You, you're just trying to throw burritos at people and win a game. And you, you can't hold more burrito at one time. Unless you catch one. You can't block anyone from picking up a burrito. That's rude. Is slap it? a burrito off the table towards a player. You can't throw or slap a burrito off the table towards a player. You must throw the burrito. You can't bounce it. No ricochet shots. No trick shots. Sorry to disappoint. And it, you can't cheat. If you feel like cheating, it's probably cheating. If you cheat, you lose the battle. That's That's that. There's a bunch of different variants, too. There's two-player variant, there's a small room variant, and there's a two-deck variant. Which is pretty much, you can upgrade, if you have two sets of the game for the two-deck variant, to two burritos to four burritos, from six players to twelve players, and four throwable burritos, and um, pretty much a lot more carnage ensues after that fact. Because not only do you have a group of twelve people now, you have four burritos. That just increases your odds of getting hit. Amazing. That, that I did that math in my head. Um, <laughs> I, I got to stop you for a second. I just had this mental image of you wearing, like, a sheriff's badge and going around, like, on behalf of the company when people were playing this game to, like, hall monitor the, like, <laughs> the game and the rules. And, like, that was, that was you know, you're, you're cheating. You're out of bounds. <laughs> Like, like that's like you just show up to people's houses like here you're playing through a through a burrito tonight or to supervise. <laughs> I don't know why I had that mental image. But... So th- there's a couple more variants to this game. There's a small room variant. Say you're in a room and you can't like there's nothing to safely hide behind or like prepare to get in cover or anything like that where it might cause damage to some objects. Like say you. you you're in your mom's china uh, room, and you you can't hide behind the gu- giant um, closets of chinaware because you know if that breaks, you you'd get you, you'd get your ass beat. That that's just that simple. So so the, the stipulation for a small rooms is you have to pass the burrito back and forth behind your back to give right. everyone a bit more time. So you can't just hold it in front of you at all times until you're ready to throw. You have to be throwing it, passing it back and forth behind your back. I feel like if you're playing in your mom's china room, you that, should... that's not important, like that. <laughs> maybe you want to live dangerously. Maybe they want to live dangerously. I, I couldn't tell you. I, I'm not those people. I wasn't personally because I'd get my ass beat. I would no longer be able to work. I would be, you know, I would probably, you know, one day playing burritos, next day at my funeral. You know, it's a gamble. It's a gamble. And the, and Why got, do I feel like I'm watching a hack comedian right now? <laughs> you, you got a you got a two player variant of this game as well. In the two player variant, all battles are between the two players, regardless of the type of battle. Obviously, because it's only two of you. Who would have guessed? There's two of you. Everything's happening between you two. Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed? This I would like bad after school special. I definitely wouldn't have guessed. <laughs> I can't tell if it's really entertaining or if I'm just really tired. Did they send him like an ad read? Like, is this and, his ad read for like? Is he auditioning for their company to like be and, there? And, and, and guess what? Guess what? Duels, exactly the same as they are in the normal version. Both players simultaneously can't pronounce that word. Count to three, two, one, burrito. Move three paces, turn around, and whip the burrito <coughs> in other people's faces. Just like normal, but there's only two of you instead of six. Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed the rules don't change for just two people compared to six? I wouldn't have guessed that. I feel but like you I'm can on adi- one of those adi- vac- 
I feel like Steve, I'm, I'm not done. I'm not done talking. <laughs> you gotta wait a second. I'm almost done. <laughs> Additionally, you can draw from either community piles or your personal pile any time in the game if there's only two of you. Kind of make it a little bit more fair, a little more interesting, a little more pizzazz. <laughs> Did someone um, give him caffeine? <laughs> that, that's, that, that's all of uh, all the rules and everything for the game. Okay. Um, <laughs> any questions? Here's the two things that this felt like. It felt like when you go on one of those vacations, like it's really cheap, and then they like you have to dedicate a day for them to pitch you a shitty timeshare. Yes. He yeah, very much gave that energy, and it's like that <laughs> meme of like the car salesman slapping the hood of the car. And it's like this will hold this bad boy will hold a lot of spaghetti or something. Like <clears throat> this whole thing just felt very. Um, you did a very good job explaining it, but it felt very uh, rehearsed and very pitchy. Oh, I can't. That was all on the spot. I didn't rehearse the damn thing. I had. That's the first time. I, that's the first time I've opened that box. Wait. So you never actually played it? Um, no, he was see, just. He was just summarizing my... the instruction sheet for us. Yep. Summarizing. Oh, so you just that wasn't recently... a summary. That was a sales pitch. Um, I got this for Christmas last year, and I have not had enough friends to play this with. Because <laughs> all my sisters are younger than me, and I'd feel bad whipping them in the face with a burrito. Steven? I don't know if I'm like... Steven, did you just pick up on that? Because he just finished telling us that you can play this with two people, but he hasn't had enough friends to play with. <laughs> I was not going to laugh, Liza. I was going to gloss over it and call somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Gordon, we'll play, we'll play Throw Throw Burrito with you. Yes. <laughs> Just be happy I didn't pick Super Fight as my game. I could have kept going oh on about gosh. that for hours. I'm crying right now. I'm laughing so hard. <laughs> yeah, I just had a mental image of Gordon in his room. Just like in the dark, holding the throat rope in the box in his lap, stroking it, being like, one day, one day the people will come. <laughs> <laughs> and he just like quietly puts it back up on his display shelf. That's exactly what I just did too. Oh I just put it back up on my shelf. And that's why his sales pitch is so good. He does this to people. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> He just cuts off the lamp oh. and sits back in his chair in the dark. <laughs> oh my god. This okay. isn't funny. This is tragic. And I will play Throw Throw Burrito with you whenever you want. We'll play it on Saturday, Gordon. Oh my god. I'm like crying. Even if, even if we don't, even if we're not able to play it, like when you get off work, wherever Steven was playing, I, when us playing games, we'll, we'll find somewhere to play. I this get week. off work earlier on Friday, though, than Saturday. Okay, then we can play it Friday. <laughs> One day he opens the box and the burritos are gone. <laughs> Those burritos took one look at your sad fucking life and they left town. I'm sorry. <laughs> they went and found a new home. The note was left. Gordon, they we'll wouldn't leave a note. Get used. They wouldn't leave a note, bud. <laughs> they wouldn't. <laughs> Oh my gosh, so oh I feel my. like I feel like I need to explain to anybody listening that it's like twelve thirty AM. We're all <laughs> very I, tired. I'm not anymore. I think it's time for us all to go to bed. I I think I, I think with that though, that's um That's the episode. That's the episode. Thanks again to Anchor for uh, sponsoring our podcast. We appreciate it greatly. <laughs> and we'll We'll talk to you guys in the next episode. Let's Be Nerds is hosted and executive produced by Gordon Bryant and me, Stephen J. McLean. Let's Be Nerds is a production of Speakeasley Productions. 
Our social media manager is Kylie Gregg. Our managing producer and co-host is Lizette Ayala. To keep up with the latest on Let's Be Nerds, join our Discord server linked in the description box below. Follow us on Instagram at Let's Be Nerds Pod or find us on Twitter at Let's the Letter B Nerds.